At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're welcoming back sweet toddies, Tatiana Weaver. Uh, there she is, the beautiful, smiling, wonderful face from Michigan. She moved to Michigan. I know that some people don't know her. And you have an incredible um, CBD line that you have, Sweet Tatis. You're also a yoga instructor. You're a healer. Um, you're now a new mom. And, you know, we're really kind of going to see where this conversation goes. But you gave me a few amazing topics like dealing with postpartum, um, also, you know, healing in this hectic world. World and you know like what it's like to really kind of pick up your whole life and start over so I want to look at and see maybe we can touch on all three of those in a little bit of a way and see where things all kind of weave together you know being that you are a weaver <laughs> yeah. so, so welcome thank you for having me I'm excited to be back I miss you Christina I miss you too I feel like I haven't seen you since the, before the pandemic and I <laughs> haven't I I look the same you look the same you look great I can't tell that you even had a baby I think you even look what? better <laughs> he's officially gonna be 20 months tomorrow oh my god time flies it's crazy he is the most beautiful soul on the planet his name is river he's baby river baby river so <laughs> cute oh. so Tatiana what do you want to talk about to start with it I you know I think that maybe segueing to, you know, you just mentioned River. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that uh, having and struggling with postpartum is a real thing. And especially, you know, maybe the compilation of being in a different city okay. with less support and also uh, having the whole world closed down, you know. So can, can you share a little bit uh, with, because I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are either... Uh, you know, new mothers or expecting mothers. And this can also be for parents too. You know, postpartum can be something that um, men go through as well as a shift in, in just the dynamic of their life, right? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I mean, you're just, your whole world just changes. Your perspective on life just completely takes a 180. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to experience, but it's been quite, quite the 20 months, or I would say, quite the 29 months. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Gonna be, you know, the whole journey of that. But I mean, like, t t let's, let's, let's start with, you know, the decision to move, right? Sure. Yes. So here we are in 2020. Let's roll back. We all remember 2020, right? Uh, I don't think so, anybody could forget, right? <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, so I was working at Liberate Hollywood. I was doing sound baths. I was doing yoga, doing my thing. I was in acting. I was going to comedy school, all the things. I felt everything was flourishing. Then I found out I was pregnant on my trip to Detroit in February around Valentine's Day. Right before then, the massive lockdowns hit, mind you. Literally, we were like traveling. That was our last hurrah. <laughs> and then here comes COVID. And basically every single thing I knew, including Liberate Hollywood, shut down. My life shut down. Everyone's world shuts down. I, I was out of body, so to speak. I had a new thing growing in my body. I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have anything. I had a new thing growing in my body, just the way you said that. <laughs> Literally, I just felt so weird like so different I had never experienced anything like that I wasn't expecting the pregnancy I wasn't expecting COVID obviously so come March 15th everything shuts down and I kind of felt like I was in my own shell like I was on an island I didn't really feel like I could talk to too many people first off you know when you get pregnant it's all this big secret and I don't love it I understand it but the first three months you're not supposed to tell people that you're pregnant and it's like that is so I don't know. It's, it just shuts you down. Almost. You feel like you are a secret. Your baby is a secret. You can, you have to hide while you're in pain. You have to hide while you're uncomfortable. And really as a woman, like it, it's stifling. 
I felt like I couldn't speak about really what was going on in my life. So that was hard for me. And oh, then yeah. and, and to touch on that a little bit, it is, you know, I understand that the reason behind it is that so many people tend to have miscarriages in the first trimester. I get it. Right. But yet also, especially if it's your first baby, you, you know, everything is new, right? right. And if it wasn't a plan, you know, it's even more like I want to talk about it. I need it. I need to discuss. This is a lot of changes in my life. And then, you, you know, you don't right. because you're told that you're, you probably you're should just wait, to. you mm -hmm. know, and you're told yeah. by that by doctors and stuff, you know, absolutely. Cause you're like, Oh, you don't want to get everybody, everybody's hopes up. And it's like, Bear hopes. What about my hopes? <laughs> you know? So, but even my boyfriend, like, you know, he was just like, well, you don't look very pregnant. And I'm just like, but that's, that's not the point. I just want to talk to somebody about my pregnancy journey and things like that. So that all was very, very me. I felt very alone. I felt isolated. And we were looking for a house at the same time, just to see the comparison between Los Angeles and Michigan. And of course, buying a house in Michigan, there's a lot more opportunities there. Um, we found a house we loved. I'm sitting in inside it right now. Uh, we lost it the first go around and then the universe came back to us. The people didn't get it the first time and we ended up getting it with a second realtor, a fresh outlook and we got it. We never walked wow. into it, but we got the house and we decided that it was meant to be. If we got it, then we were meant to leave. And so we made the decision at the end of March to pack up and <laughs> get ready to go across the country while I was, that was in late June. So I was like five months pregnant, very pregnant, wow. um, sitting in and the back. And that was in the middle of the hard lockdown. The middle of COVID. So this is hilarious. hilarious. The hard, hard lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. So every bathroom, so I drove across country with my boyfriend and his brother, and I was in the back of the pickup truck <laughs> <laughs> while they drove across. And we, every gas station we went to because of COVID, they wouldn't let me pee. And I was visibly very pregnant. I was, wow. you know, in distress. I needed to use the bathroom and every single gas station would say no to me. And they're like, we're so sorry because of COVID. We can't let you. And I'm Dah, that's like the worst thing to tell a pregnant woman. <laughs> she can't use the bathroom. So are you peeing in the bushes then? Yeah. So I peed on the side of the road a lot. And then the only place that would really let you use the restroom was like a Target for some reason. Target was, you were allowed to use the restroom or I would sneak in and run it. Um, but yeah, so my whole life changed. I ended up in Michigan, a complete 180. I had no family, almost no friends. You know, I didn't have my my holistic tie. I didn't have my yeah. livery. I didn't have my people. I didn't have my go-to and I didn't have my mom, you know, I didn't have any of that. So I started to really focus on nesting and we, we just put holes in this house. As soon as we walked in, we started, um, remodeling <laughs> and we're still <laughs> doing that two years later. So we, I was nesting and just working on remodeling and focusing on my baby. And I did that um, and he came three weeks early. Uh, yeah, he was considered preemie, but he was very healthy. Um, we stayed in the hospital for like three or four days. And then basically I was in a COVID hole. Like we just, we, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. I was a new mom. So we stayed home. I snuggled my baby. I enjoyed every moment, every second I could get with him. And that was life. And then a few months later in December, we actually ended up getting COVID all of us. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So even my baby had COVID and that was a little scary because he had like 103 fever for oh, a few no. days. Yeah. Um, so we got through that. We got through that. And then here I am. I'm finding my way here. I'm, you know, I'm trying to find my holistic world in Michigan and find my people and do classes and meet communities and go to yoga, go to different, different events I see. So I'm trying to connect here with with people yeah. so I can find my place. <laughs> yeah. And you're, and you're doing a good job. I see that you're doing classes. I see that you're doing online classes, you know, and yeah. you know, but I mean the big, if we go back to your story a little bit here, it's like, okay, maybe some people can't, you know, connect with the move or the pregnancy, but you know, about this, like just taking this leap of faith and starting over and just saying, you know what, it's okay to change. And yeah. not only is it okay to change, it's okay to, 
you know, what seems to be so risky, what seems to be so scary and mm-hmm. unknown, it's really just a matter of trust. Just one foot in front of the other, go with the flow, figure it out. And like through this, you had trust, you had faith. You said, okay, if the if the house comes back around and it's and then it's ours and it's meant to be, and then we're packing up and we're leaving, you know? Yeah. And and you went on this whole voyage. But it, you know, in so many ways that's I, I see that as like COVID did that for a lot of people. You know, right. you might that. have moved with or without COVID because prior to that, I know you were considering moving to Michigan before COVID hit. You mm-hmm. were already looking at houses and things along that lines and talking about it. But, you know, you might have taken that leap. But like COVID shook up the world and said, OK, stop for a minute. And I think even though it was so bad in so many ways, it was so good in that way, because mm-hmm. it, if people were forced to realize that shifting their whole entire life, things were going to be okay because they made Mm -hmm. it through it. Maybe they could take other risks to shift their whole entire life. Totally. And I'm of the belief if it gives you any type of flutters or butterflies, or there's like any type of excitement and you get scared, then that's the time you're supposed to take the leap. Like if you feel that, I don't know, then that means you should do it. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. And in, in finding and in really nesting and in, in finding this new tribe and home for yourself, you know, out, outside of what you've known, right? Right. You know, like, I mean, you, you shared a little bit that, you know, you went through a little postpartum. So, you know, for ever, all the things up until what you shared right now is embracing, loving, good, positive, you know, so where did that, that, um, that sadness or that pain or that, you know, kind of internal struggle start to occur? Well, I'm one thing I haven't mentioned at all is I still deal with the chronic pain that I've been dealing with for the past almost going on seven years now. Um, so one of the things that I was dealing with with my body changing was the change of pain, the different ways my like my neck pain turned into extreme shoulder pain and my migraines got out of control. And then once I was like, that's when it first started. When I first found out I was pregnant and my body was like, oh my God, what's going on? And then probably four to five months in, I started feeling like a little bit better. I started understanding my body more. Um, I had something with some fibroids, which I know a lot of women deal with. Um, so I had to take care of that. Um, uh, but going into, going into almost having my child and getting ready to like have this new life, I just got, I started to become really nervous and really scared and I have a lot of energy anyway. So I'm the pregnant woman who's supposed to be chilling and sitting down and calming down. And I'm just like everywhere running around like a crazy person. Um, So the anxiety came when the baby started to come and then my baby came early. So I was in, I was in labor for 27 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then here comes the doctor saying, you know, you're not opening up fast enough. You, we, we need to do something. The baby's starting to get a fever and you're starting to get a fever. Like we need to do something now. So I had an emergency C-section and that just, that was hard. That was hard. I really thought I was going to have a natural birth. I thought, you know, things were going to go my way, so to speak, which a lot of women think that. I didn't want to take an epidural, so I didn't for 19 hours. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do this. And then I was like, never mind, I'm doing that. Um, So I ended up getting an epidural, but I was also on Pitocin, which helps to open you up. And that's very, very, very painful. Um, And then, of course, because of the pain in my spine and my body, the epidural wasn't working. It wasn't going on my left side, which is so odd. Um, So they yeah. So they had to give it to me three times. So here, here's Tatiana. was super unique. <laughs> three times you had to have an epidural? Yeah. They had to keep, they, they didn't know what was going on and why, like literally my right side of my body was just like feeling good. I'm feeling great. And my left side was like, <laughs> <gasps> wow. And for yeah, those that so- don't know, you just touched on it briefly, but, um, you suffered a, a very bad car accident a few years ago, seven, eight years ago, whenever, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, very, very bad back pain, you know, sometimes decrippling and like, you know, that's what got you into a lot of CBD products and yeah. what got you into the yoga and the sound bath and all of the different things is trying to find that. And, you know, so 
still, you know, I'm wishing that it would be gone, but I mean, it led you down a direction into some alternative healing modalities. Um, but I can't even imagine carrying a baby in the next year weight with the back pain. But right. then here you are. And so it's, it's interesting because it almost shines some light into, you know, how your spine is damaged, right? right. Absolutely. You know, like like some of that, you know, the, the, your spinal fluid must not, you know, there must be like a cutoff between one side and the next at a certain point, And so it doesn't Absolutely. even go over there, you know? Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I did not mention, which is crazy because this is a part of my journey, but after I had my child, I went through my experience of I didn't want a C-section, ended up getting an emergency one. And there was nothing I could do about it, whatever, yeah. so to speak. Um, and so in feeling that um, unknowing and I felt like I didn't necessarily have control, I didn't know what to say to the doctors any more than, you know, what I knew. Uh, so I decided to go to doula training. I took an online doula course. Oh, cool. And, and a prenatal yoga course. So just personally, so I could have that information. And it really is about empowering women to ask the right questions, to know what their rights are, to know what they're allowed to say yes and no to. Because most women hear a doctor say, you need this. And they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, totally. Like, you know, yeah. and it's just like, there because are it's so oftentimes it's presented as more like a telling Mm -hmm. And then you do the, the, your, your agreement instead mm -hmm. of like, it's, it's like, you need this. Is that okay? You know, and, yeah. and, and instead of, you know, when it's actually asking and you have a choice, but right. most people think that the way that it's phrased instead of, you know, uh, you can tell me whether this is okay or not, you know, this would be something that's an option. Do you want to go with this option? It's like, it's very weirdly phrased a lot of times. Yeah. Same Hold thing on. for like even mild prescriptions and this and that. It's like, you don't have to take the prescription that's given to you at the doctor's office. Absolutely. You don't even have to say that you want it, you know, like, right. oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write you a prescription for this. Right. right. And because you decide to go and fill it and you get it. You you know, like that's your kind of agreement, but you can yeah. stop at any point of that. You, just because Hold they on. say, I'm going to write you, you know, some Xanax doesn't mean that you need to take the Xanax. It doesn't even need to mean that you need the Xanax. <laughs> right. Right. And what are our other options? Do I have another option? Yeah. Is there something other than Xanax? Can I, can I smoke a bowl? Can I take some CBD? <laughs> Please? Yeah. Right. Oh. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. So interesting. So in, in the doula training, you, you learn a lot of that. And, and that's yeah. one of the, the things, you know, I always thought like doula just helps people through like more natural birth, you know, so maybe it's yeah. my ignorance of it, you know, but like also teaching about the proper with in the medical you know, yeah. like just understanding rights and understanding, Absolutely. you know, a little bit more about the whole experience, right? Because for a lot of people, yeah. especially first time mothers, it's completely unknown. Right. And they will, I mean, and just like we were talking about the doctors and prescriptions, they, people think they have to have a baby in hospital. Like you don't have to have the baby in the hospital. Yes. There are, you know, things there you might need and stuff like that, but you know, the first thing we should think of is nature. The first thing we should think of is my body can do this. I can have this baby. I am powerful. I am woman. Hear me roar. All the things. I and am I feel, woman. Hear me roar. <laughs> and I just you. feel like it's the last thing they tell you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like nature should come absolutely first and the rest should be a secondary supportive, whatever we need it for, we can use it, but not you need to be in the hospital hooked up to these things with, you know, everybody thinks they have, a, have to have a heart monitor on the whole time for their baby. That's mm -hmm. intrusive. They really don't. And it's just like the little things like this that you know you can say no to or have the power over and make your own choice is really important. And I think that's why we need more doulas in this world, just to just to show women that like like what their options are. Like if you want drugs, take them, girl, no problem. But you're you have an option not to. If you mm -hmm. want an epidural, take it, but you don't have to. If you yeah. want Pitocin, that might help, but you really don't have to. The doctors made me think that I really had to take Pitocin. And now going through doula training, I I know now know that there are other options or that I could have waited a little bit or I could have tried other things before I got mm -hmm. to the Pitocin. And it really is sad that we're just not empowered with you know, the information or the knowledge to talk to these doctors in the right way or to have 
the successful feeling of the, you know, of yeah. us being treated right in the medical field, you know? So it was really nice for me to get that training. I am offering services. Like people can come for one-on-one sessions with me, um, just to get more information about pregnancy or if they have questions. And then I also do like holistic one-on-ones, like I'll do a, a sound bath for a pregnant woman and do a little work on her and do some freaky and things like that. So I'm offering oh, amazing. That. Yeah. That's super beneficial, right? Yeah. You know, like that vibration of the sound and then oh, in the yeah. womb, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so good for that, you. Like, yeah. My baby is very musical. He just, and I, I told my boyfriend, I go, he is going to be a dancer. I knew it in my belly. This little man does not stop dancing. If he doesn't have music on, he is like, like, where's the music? Where's it? Like, and he loves music. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. But I just had to say that. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. But me, but vibration is everything. Frequency, vibration, energy. It's all so very meaningful. And I just feel like it's something that we don't talk about enough. No, oh, yeah. And it seems like there's there's so many things like through your voice, uh, like kind of uh, journey through healing yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And also like seeking more information because of the experiences that you went through, right? You know, so you have this car accident happen, you're in chronic pain, you seek out all these other he- alternative healing modalities, you dive in, you find a little bit of, of different approaches to life, a different modality and a mindset, a belief system, a different tribe, right? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you go through this, uh, you know, kind of traumatic experience of having an emergency C-section, a kind of, uh, you know, drugs just being kind of forced upon you, feeling like you didn't have control or choice of the matter and saying, you know what, I'm actually just at least for myself going to be curious to take these classes and just explore. Yeah. And then through that, you know, now you're offering all of these services, the ones from before and that, and, and these new ones to other people. But it, it, it started out as a seeking for answers of, in yourself Absolutely. and then realizing how beneficial they are. And saying, okay, well, how can I help other people so they don't have to necessarily go through the traumatic experiences that I went through or seek as much as I needed to, you know, and get to that level. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. You are spot on. Yeah. It's been an ongoing journey that just seems to be snowballing, which I love. So I'm not sure where I will end up, but... Here we are. But but that's life, you know, like we go through, we learn and we grow. I mean, they say, you know, they say whoever they is. I mean, I don't know, but you know, there's this saying that, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? You know, and so many people stop this curiosity for life. And if we just say, all right, I'm just curious. I just want to explore what this is all about. Mm -hmm. We don't know where that leads, right? It could be one class that we think that we're taking to further our knowledge or because we have a a certain kind of curiosity and it could turn into a whole business. Yeah. I mean, you know, it could, it could shift your whole lifestyle. It could, you know, cause you to move across the country, you know, whatever the case may be, but like, you know, you start somewhere and Mm -hmm. it leads you everywhere. Absolutely. And sometimes it doesn't lead you too far and that's okay too, but that's, that's great. You know, it mm. becomes a book that you, or a class that you take in the knowledge and then it goes on the shelf and then you do something else, you know? Right. Absolutely. And I took, I also took more recently just a 10 hour breath work course, just again, for my own personal knowledge. And also because I offer it in the beginning of my sound baths and I just mm-hmm. wanted to understand, you know, what's happening in my body when we're doing breath work and just more just different types of breath work that I could use and what they're used for. So that was really interesting as well. Look at, see, yeah. So when you're, when you're alone and you don't have any friends, go to school. Yeah, no, but seriously, but look at you, you took advantage of the time, you know, like so many people did do that. And then so many people did not you know, we had, we had this opportunity where life was kind of on pause in the whole world. And I still think that we're actually still in it, you know, like we're in this, we're in this, okay, we're not sure what's going to happen next. We're not sure what, what's going to unfold. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of shifts in the economy. There's a lot of potential, you know, new variants or new, new diseases, you know, like it's like, it's, or war, you know, like there's all of the stuff that's still, Yeah, you can't keep up, you know, it's like, it's like one thing after another, but the Mm -hmm. one thing that you can count on is change. Right. And you can either embrace something 
or you can run from something, right? Totally. Yeah. And, you know, if you run from it, it's going to bury you alive. It's going to suffocate you. It's going to eventually catch up to you and you're going to be defeated by it. But yeah. if you embrace something, you can have control over it. Yes. It can, you know, like if, if the something's like, you know, this obstacles in front of you and you're climbing a wall, you know, this and you're feeling like, oh my God, it's so much work and it's so pressureful and it's all this stuff. You're probably going to get exhausted, but if you look at it and you're like, wow, you know, if I get over that wall, I'm going to be so fit. I'm going to be so this. I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to conquer the world. And you embrace it as mm -hmm. a challenge that you're looking forward to achieving versus this problem that's in front of you that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's a completely different mindset. And I hope people get that because what I'm hearing from you is that you have these situations instead of running from them or fearing them, you said, okay, let me embrace it. Let me discover what else I can find from this. Let me use this as, you know, a navigation tool, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. As a stepping but, point. Yeah, because I mean, and we didn't get into much of like where you felt overwhelmed and like more like in that depressive state and stuff like that. But it doesn't seem like you were there that long. And you said, okay, well, what else can I do to empower myself? Mm -hmm. I'm here. This happened. Mm-hmm. I already went through it, right? Yeah, I mean, you even said those words. It, it happened. It was not a. It was a not my will, but it already happened. So, what am I going to do about it? Right. How am I going to move from here? Yeah. How am I going to change my story so that yeah. it's not a sad story I'm telling? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, how do it, I it, empower myself? Right. Yeah, and use it as something that you use it for your advantage, right? okay, this experience happened to me. I don't want it to happen to others or I'm going to now know my rights better. I'm going to help other people know their rights better. I'm going to learn about natural birthing processes. You know, like you use it as be like, okay, this created me to go like this. Right. Instead Absolutely. of, ah! Yeah, seriously. Which <laughs> is really Sometimes easy people end up in like, you know, depressive states and, and, and I get yeah. it, you know, and there's chemical imbalances and different things that happen. So I'm not oh. saying anything like that. I know everybody's story is different. Right. And by all means, you know, I'm not belittling anybody's experience. I'm just simply saying that if you can find even just a thread of how this serves you and how you can embrace something, Right. Even as bad or as tumultuous or as painful or as traumatic as anything can be mm -hmm. when it's ready, right? It's not skipping the grieving process. It's not, right. you know, just washing things under the rug. You let yourself grieve. If something traumatic happens. Somebody, you know, dies suddenly. Something else happens. Grieve a little and then mm -hmm. use that. As, and then you say, okay, what is the right time for me, you know? It's when it feels like, okay, I've went through it. I've grieved. I've, I've experienced. I've that. But when it feels like it's been for a long time and you're not moving beyond, it's probably the time to have a perception shift, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know it's, you know, postpartum. One big thing that you deal with, obviously, is your body changing. And mine was dealing with pain as well as dealing with being 50 pounds heavier than I ever was in my whole life. So oh, well, yeah, you lost it all. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like well, I'm good. I feel like I'm I feel like I gained 50 pounds. I'm like, oh, this pandemic, the COVID, COVID-19 became the COVID-30. <laughs> <laughs> they said you either gained 19 or you lost 19 in COVID. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely gained it plus a little, maybe because it went more than, you know. <laughs> more than more than two weeks. The slow spread. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But yeah, I mean, one of the things that I had to deal with was, you know, dealing with the idea of what my body was, what it is, and then the potential of what it could be. Cause you know, a lot of people are like, don't, you know, don't focus on it. Don't try to try to lose weight. So mentally I told myself, I am my mom. I just had a being come out of my body. I'm going to give myself a break for the first time in my life. I think, and probably starting at 16 years old, I will not think about what my body looks like in the mirror and I will be grateful for what my body has done for me and see how we can move on from there. And naturally without, literally without trying, and I, I am still breastfeeding. So I've been breastfeeding for 20 months, um, but I lost 50 pounds in, I don't know, six months without wow. doing, just by breathing, by running around chasing my new kid and things like that. Like I really 
tried to focus on the happiness of having a baby versus the uh, guilt of eating that chocolate cake because I'm still 50 pounds overweight. I literally didn't care what I ate. I didn't care. I didn't care how much I exercised. I just like let myself be. If I wanted to do yoga, I did yoga. If I wanted to breathe, I did some breathing. If I wanted to go for a really long walk, that's what I did. But I didn't do it for the purpose of losing weight. I did it for myself. I did it to connect back with my son. I did it to, you know, have some some soul shakes in here. I just did it for myself. So I think that's something that people should um, just be aware of is that there, there is a lot of pressure to be whomever you were before and you're just not that. So accept yeah. yourself and just be, be in your glory, be in your chubby, be in your, like, whatever that is, just enjoy it for a little while. You know what I mean? I think it's hard for people just to not, it's hard for people to accept what is. So yeah. that was like a timing in my life where I was like, this is not about me. This is about my baby. And that is the first time I could take myself away from myself. And just yeah, really but focus. in the same sense, mm-hmm. you allowed yourself to just be yourself. So the irony of it, you know, right. you listen right. to your happiness, you listen to your truth, but you didn't, you didn't be the ideal image of the outside version of you. Right. And the interesting thing in that is that, you know, I've, I've, I've heard this numerous times before from from different health experts and different people and stuff like that and, uh, you know, dietary experts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They say if you're going to eat something, if you don't have guilt about it and you enjoyed it and you were happy you ate it, it like your body, it has something to do with the cortisol levels. And I'm not a health expert, you know, but it has yeah. something to do with the cortisol levels and the way that your body metabolizes the food that literally if you're guilty at yourself and you're mad at yourself for eating the chocolate cake, you literally digest it that much slower and pack it on as cal- as pounds, you know, or, cal- right. you know, that they stay yeah. versus if you're happy and you're just okay and you embraced it and you don't have those stress hormones running through your body, you don't have that guilt energy and that kind of slug that comes from yeah. guilt and shame, right? The moment you feel guilty and shame, you feel fatigue, right? Mm-hmm. It's like immediate. You could have, you could wake up, you could have so much energy, something goes on and you feel bad and you, you feel <laughs> shitty about yourself. And suddenly you feel like you can't even walk across the room, right? It's not, yeah. It's, so what does that do into your body, right? If you feel the guilt and shame, just, you know, but I love that. I love that you didn't have to try, right? Your body naturally went back to its homeo, uh, you know, homeo, whatever stasis. And, uh, and, and, and it just, you know, but you weren't concerned with it. You weren't focused on it and it just allowed it to be. Absolutely. And that was, I would, that was, that was, I wouldn't say that was hard. I would, it was different. I felt like this was a different way to approach something that I I can, you know, I can try to approach things that way, but this was the first time it really just happened. I said this to myself, I wanted to focus on my baby and that's what I did. And I was really proud of myself for that. (laughs) Yeah, I love it. I mean, it sounds like in in general, I mean, the theme of the podcast, even though like we've been talking about different things is embracing change. There we go. Really, you know, like it's about how you embraced and moved with the flow of things, figured out things, you know, like, okay, world shut down. Okay. No bathrooms work. Okay. I'll pee on the side of the road. Okay. We're going to do this. Okay. We didn't get the house the first time around. Okay. The other buyer's going to get it. Now it's back on the table for us. Okay. Now, okay. We're going to take this. Okay. That means yeah. moving. That means this, that means whatever, right? Mm-hmm. New being the- inside, new different lifestyle, new whatever. Yeah. Right. And the, one of the reasons his name is Baby River, River, is because we flow. And that was like really one of the only names that we loved. And the meaning of it means so much to in how we got there. And a funny thing is, in all my sound baths that I played at Liberate, I would end, and this is in 2019, 2020, um, I would end my sound baths with River by Leon Bridges, which is so weird. Um, wow. But yeah, so that just, it all just came together. Yeah, that's so cute. I know. Not many people know that, but now you do. <laughs> and now everybody else that watches this podcast knows. Yes, and, River and Vibes. So, 
so Tatiana, I know we're kind of coming to the end here of our podcast, but I want people to be able to find you. You, I mean, you do things remote, you, so it doesn't matter where you you are. We have listeners that are all over Europe. We have some listeners in Australia. We have a lot of <laughs> listeners around the United States, very highly dense population in Los Angeles. But, you know, there's... There is, you know, people can find you. There might be even some people in the Midwest and Michigan that, you know. Um, so I know you have your product line, and that's sweettatas.com, right? Sweettatas.com. Yeah. Sweettatas. <laughs> and, and, and uh, but where can they find you and more information about some of the classes, the workshops, some, some things that you have going on, maybe if they want to work with you one-on-one? Totally. Um, well, if you go to my brand, uh, www.sweettatas.com, you will find my services page and also my event calendar and then a way to contact me. So you can contact me. We can talk about what you want or what you need and how I can be of service to you. I love it. And you're also pretty, uh, pretty still active on social media. Do you have some handles that you want them to follow? Yes. So follow me at Sweet Tatas, but also follow my main page is call her Tatiana. And I am Tatiana. So call me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a nerd. I love it. It's been such great. We need to catch up a little bit more off yes, outside please. of the podcast and I'm looking forward to your visit. Maybe you'll do a little pop-up uh, event in person when you're here. I'm throwing that out of the hair now. We, you know, we'll see, you know, that would be awesome. we, we'd love to have you. And, um, we're going to link some of the calendars of events down below. Um, if you're listening to this, the link is down below. Um, also, if you are watching this on YouTube, we are trying to get a little bit more traction on the videos. So please like, comment, follow, subscribe. subscribe. Uh, all of those fun things because our YouTube needs some help. A podcast is going strong, but our YouTube needs some help. So keep this okay. going so we can be seen as well as heard. Thank you so much for joining. Until Love next you. time. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.